Hello! Welcome to application project number two for financial statement analysis, summer 2020. Um, let me just give you a brief summary of the project. Uh, it's worth 15 points or 15% of your grade. It builds on SRP1, which should be included in this presentation. So you want to take the first presentation that you did, project one, integrate it into this. Table of contents can be very helpful. Uh, there's five distinct parts of the project, and each of the points for each section are identified. Um, it is due no later than 11.59 11 on June 18th. Um, I'll be reviewing and grading them as submitted. If you've got any questions or want to review before submitting, uh, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, submission pop format is PowerPoint. Do your work in Excel, all your formulas, schedules in Excel. Copy and paste the relevant ones into PowerPoint. Use the note section for things, but do attach the Excel worksheet so that if I have a question on how you did something, I can look at the formulas and give you partial credit if needed. Uh, the other thing I want you to do, and some of you already did this on project one and I liked it so much, uh, we're gonna do it. Uh, be, and that is to use a video or audio uh, for those slides that are analytical and explanatory. Okay, uh, so that's a slight change for some of you. The purposes of this assignment is for you to be able to analyze the firm's historical performance starting with the work done in SRP 1. Interpret the investor presentation in 10K. Demonstrate the ability to use and build defined models. Present information in an easy to comprehend format, balancing too much with too little information. Use notes and attachments. Now, one of the things I'd like to do is just, this is, I want to show you that you can, these, this project will help you develop skills you can use in your future no matter what you do. Ability to read and interpret a 10K and in investor presentation, which is a starting point for anything in financial statement analysis. To build Excel skills, develop presentation skills. Um, grading, uh, organization and presentation. Communication demonstrates understanding. Um, accuracy of computation and formulas. That's why I'd ask you to really uh, attach your Excel worksheet so that I can check them if I need to. Uh, clarity and depth of responses. This is a big thing. Um, do you really understand it or are you asking a question by your statement? How is everything interrelated? How does one area impact the other? How do cost of goods sold relate to revenue? How does revenue impact cost of goods sold? So that interrelationship, a lot of that's gonna come with how you organize this presentation. How do you lay it out? Is there a logical model you can use to explain things? So the first thing you're going to do, um, and this is only two points because it should be for 315, fairly basic stuff to, to do. Uh, in 311, you hopefully learned how to do all of this. So this should just be a rehash of what you've already done in 311. Uh, so extract the data from 10K into Excel. Then create schedules in Excel, copy into PowerPoint. Create a five-year summary income statement, starting with the oldest to the newest. Because remember, we're gonna forecast out. So if you start with the oldest, move to the right with the newest, you'll be able to create trends you're going to have to select what components of the income statement are most meaningful to understanding your company. Okay, this is where decision. Create a, then, once you do the summary, create a common size income statement and show the income graphically in a meaningful way. Create a five-year summary balance sheet, oldest to newest again. You don't need every piece of information on a balance sheet to start our analytics, okay? So while there might be five or six lines for shareholders' equity, we only need one. Property, plant, and equipment, 
we only need one. But you got to decide what's important for your company. Okay, it's all different. Then do a summary cash flow statement, um, a very straightforward. So this gets us all of our information that we're going to start to work with. Okay, so those are the things you need to go. Notice how you can just look at these as we're going through them. And the next task for part two, analysis of the income statement, six points. So based on the information that you gathered, create a five-year chart of sales revenue. Then identify the annual and five-year average growth in both dollars and percent. Explain this change in sales for the past five years by breaking the change down into the rate volume components. Then discuss how the company applied ASC 606 and what the impact is from our perspective as analysts. So this is the starting point. You get this right, you will see so many things follow. So the real key one here is this change in sales, uh, breaking it down into the rate volume components. Uh, continuing on part two, uh, evaluate the cost of goods sold. Show a graphical trend of the gross margin for five years. We want to see it getting better or at least staying the same. If the gross margin is declining, that's something we need to look at. We need to compare it to the industry. How does Home Depot compare to Lowe's and other firms? Comment and explain any variances in the trend. Re all, review all the other expenses. Explain any variances. Is there any big thing in there? What was it? Provide a detailed explanation. Then prepare an analysis of the tax provision for three years. Three, cash flow and working capital. Two points. Compute simple free cash flow and free cash flow. Evaluate and discuss the firm's liquidity. This is more important today than ever before because of the impact of COVID-19, which businesses are still working through and will continue to. So when you look at liquidity, you want to talk about the quantity of liquidity, the timeliness or velocity or speed of the liquidity, and the quality of it. How good is it? Show all work and computations. Then complete a stress. Then complete a stress test. Part four. This is worth two points also. Identify the capital structure. Determine the relationship and extent of leverage. Evaluate the firm's ability to pay back debt. Okay, this becomes a, a key thing too. Determine the firm's additional credit capacity and evaluate it. Part five, compute the ROE, ROC, return on invested capital for five years and display tabularly and graphically. Comment on the trend in comparison to industry average. Interpret what is return on invested capital telling us. Then complete the DuPont analysis for five years and identify where are the earnings really coming from. This project covers everything covered so far um, and integrated manner becomes that. Always consider trends. Quantitative, qualitative. Base it on fact. Don't ask another question that's embedded. You collect data, organize data, interpret data, and then present it. Tie it together. What you expect, everything you need will be in the 10K or investor presentation. If you haven't found it, you haven't really looked for it. Remember how the 10K is organized. Some things may be in the management discussion. Some things may be in the notes to financial statements. But the company is focusing on what's in the 10K. Okay. This should take you about eight to 10 um, hours. Visualization and formatting is important. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to walk through it with you. Um, have a wonderful week.